It's finally happening! It's train day, everyone! And we'll be building the greatest train station ever conceived. Oh, um... Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we finally got some tasty, tasty oil. It made an entire city of oil processing plants. And we also checked out the void. Which if we were to use, we could actually delete anything we wanted. So nuclear waste, goodbye. And also we developed a really cool like whirlpool processing method. But we're not gonna be using this much in our actual let's play here. It's cool to mess around with, but for reasons I discussed, we're just gonna put it away. However, you know what we are gonna be messing with? Trains, baby. Oh yes, finally. They are unlocked. We had computers from a temporary factory. We got the oil for them too. Steel already under control. Heavy mod to their frames. Like the whole checklist is pretty much done. Not in like permanent setups, but at least we can do something with the trains today. And we're gonna be doing actually quite a lot. Primarily building our train super station in the middle of our base, which is kind of like the last piece of the puzzle to pull all of our other parts of our base together. Because with the trains, we get all the items we need, and things will start growing exponentially. And also, once it's built, we can finally do some like the support brackets for our base, so it's not looking so, um, weird. <laughs> and it can look a lot better. But yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you enjoy, remember to leave a like. But first off, we're actually gonna be going to our creative world for a little bit, because I have to explain to you how the new train system's gonna work. Like, in our first season, when we first tried out this game, things were really simple. Like, the trains would go from point A down here to point B and back. Like, that was it. Or, when we built the Iron Arc, when we are collecting 13,000 or whatever iron from this area, it was a bit more complicated, and it was kind of like a loop with multiple stations. However, in this Let's Play, we are doing the Hyper Super Big Brain Strat. And that's why I kind of need a, kind of a example area to show you how it works. Okay, so this is the really basic example I was talking about, where things just go from A to B. You got a train on both sides, the train on the right wants to go to this station, train on the left wants to go to that station. Literally the easiest type of setup that you can do. Like literally, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And although it's simple, it does work, like if you just have something that's nearby, you can just send a train like this and boom, you're good. But then like I was saying with like the crazy iron arc example thing, like we're getting a ton of iron over in this section of the map and bringing it back here. There's a long time between the train going from station one to station two, and all the bins fill up, and that causes what's called a throughput issue. Like the loading bin fills up and then backs up all the way to the miners, before the train can even get to it and bring it back. And a simple way we solved the throughput issue in the last season was by just adding on more train stations to like point B, and then switching up the trains so instead of having one just going back and forth, we had multiple trains going forward, and then all of these trains just went in a loop. So the loop would go around, all the trains would drop stuff off at the same station, and then stop at their own separate station. That way we can switch up the input, so there's one place, two places, three places for the input to drop things off at. And with three times the trains, that means three times the throughput, and the trains could keep up with the miners or whatever was on the other side. And this kind of solution works actually quite well. If we only had one train station and multiple trains going like just to the one stop, all of the trains would end up bunching together in what's called Train God. And then, since they're all stacked on each other, they wouldn't pick up all the items. So like, kind of imagine something looking like this. Like all of these trains here are all stacked into one, all of the freight car places are all stacked into one, so when the actual freight platform unloads stuff, it goes to one of these three trains, and then they all leave. So train god issue was a big problem, and that's why we have the three train stations so they don't stack up at this point. But although this system did work, it still had its own issue because it's still a kind of like an A to B system. So say we wanted to get 
I don't know, iron from over here, we'd have to send a train from A to B and then back. A to B and then back. And etc. and etc. and etc. And it was very inefficient. So now in this Let's Play, I've developed the ultimate train strategy, brother. Which is still quite similar to this, but with one spicy addition. And that spicy addition is going to be a core loop. So we have a core loop now that goes around, just in a circle like that, and with one drop-off point, which will be at our base. However, trains will be able to kind of break off the loop and stop at other places, so they could stop over here, they could stop over there, but they all rejoin the main loop and drop everything off at the same place. So now, considering our map example, Instead of just doing straight lines out to areas we need items from, we can do a loop around the entire world. And then whenever we need something from some part, say we want the oil from over on the coast here, part of a loop can just dip off, grab the oil, rejoin the loop, and head back to base. And then back at base, of course not everything would drop off to one single station. We can make a million different adjacent stations right beside it. So we'd have one here, have one over here, and everything goes to where it needs to be. It'll be like one giant super station in the middle of our base. And it's gonna look really, really, really cool. And also, this is kind of how train tracks work in real life too. Like, the back and forth method is pretty ridiculous when you really stop and think about it. But back in the day, there used to be an issue with trains where they become like ghost trains because of an issue with junctions, but that has been fixed, so a design like this is now possible and super ultra efficient. However, it's easy to make on the small scale, but things get kinda spicy when you bump it up to the world domination scale. Because we don't have a ton of space here, and also, you know, we need everything from the entire world brought to one location. No matter how you slice it or you dice it, you're gonna have a bad time. So, I did a little bit of measurements in our train area, and the train stations and unloading stations are about four tiles wide. So, minding there's a one gap in between to bring items up and down, we'll have one station, two station, three station, four stations, five stations. If we just built like one super train to stop at each of them. But I have a very complex idea that we're gonna try out here. And first off, we're going to have to fill in this whole area, so we'll select you. How far do we have to go? Probably like 80 in that direction? Like a lot. And maybe like negative 20? Is that about right? Wow, if it's not right, it's dang close. Oh my gosh. Wow, actually one short? Dang, what a good guess. Not bad, not bad, kids. Not bad, not bad. Anyway, this is our main train platform. Let's say, okay, 1,600 buildings, woo! All right, and now for part two here, and that is building in all of the railways, and I'm going to need a few extra materials for that. Okay, got a bit more organized, so let's begin. So mainly, we have one, two stations that way, one, two stations this way, Okay, it looks like we're gonna be able to put in our main track for the main loop just through the middle here. So this will start here, and then we'll just build this to the other end. Okay, so that's good. Uh, one of these tracks is gonna be the outbound loop, so this will go out and around the world, and the other will be an inbound loop. So all of the trains that come from that direction will end up coming through in here to train stations on this side, and vice versa. Okay, but with that now, now we have to kind of sneak tracks off to the side. So wherever there are node points, wherever we stopped with the rails, that's where we can connect a new one. So if we delete this and just add in something else, it's like say we stopped here, then built out there, now here, we can break this off and go this way. But now it's important to know where the heck our train stations are going to actually be located. Like exactly. 
And it looks like for this row, they're gonna be about here. Okay. So let's just make a line to kind of measure things out. Alright. Make another train station right over here, just in line with the one down the way. Okay, so that's our second line. This will go out to about here. And now from the junction point we just made, we have to split the rail out to the outer line first and then to that inner line. So from here specifically. Okay, so that will line up with all the future stations there. Except we waste a ton of space, so I'm just gonna move that back really quick. Okay, and now things are looking a little bit better. Still a lot of extra space in there, but this will work. Or actually, I almost made a horrible mistake there, and I almost had the train station the wrong way. Okay, let's actually have it in the right direction now. There we go. Arrows pointing forward, it's kind of important, especially when we're messing with critical alignments of our base. Okay, and that's a lot better. And now that we have these vital measuring points, we can actually make the proper train stations. And I think we're going to have four train stations per side. Like super train stations. But first we have to reconnect the stations with the line. So we have to rebuild this on the other side of the platform. Yeah, flying up really high here, it's looking pretty good. So let's build our train stations and kind of roll with it for now. And then for each of the trains, we're gonna presume they're gonna be going up and down a lot. And I think through the worst kind of inclines, trains will need four locomotives on them. And now we just keep adding on free platforms and kind of see where we end up with things. And wow, so I've added in all the free platforms here and oh my gosh, we're gonna be able to make some very spicy, spicy trains. Just have to find the middle of all of them and add in another station. So we'll have two different trains that will loop into this area and drop stuff off here. Oh god though, there are so many freaking freight platforms. Oh, the mega trains we're gonna be able to create. It's fantastic. So one second here, let me just count these out. With a yield handy dismantling tool, because actually counting things out is ridiculous. All right, so it looks like we have 26 freight platforms. We have to add four onto that for the train station and three empty platforms at the very beginning of all this. So, subtracting another four for the next train will mean we have 22 empty freight car platforms available. Meaning each train will have four locomotives and 11 freight cars. Yeah, that'll do. And also that means from here, if we just count 11 up, we can find where to put the next train. All right, so this one is 11, good. And we have to start getting rid of you, 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 and you. And you shall become a new train station. Congratulations on the promotion. And these will be empty bays for the extra train locomotives. All right, all right. And we can do this, by the way. Like, just having the train stations connected this way, you don't have to have the gap in between. I usually like to for aesthetics, but we're trying to take over the world here, okay? <laughs> and also, really quick, uh, the ratio for locomotives to freight cars is uh, one to two. So one locomotive can carry two freight cars, and that's like up the steepest possible incline. So technically speaking, this train will only be able to handle eight freight cars. So that's not good if we have 11. But that also doesn't take into account like built up speed and things of that nature. So we should be fine. If things end up breaking, we fix them, of course. We're just gonna kinda go with it for now. So now I'm gonna copy this just over here to its right and then mirror the whole system on the left. So we'll have train stations galore. And now behold, our main super station, where all of our trains from around the world will gather and drop off things. Oh, goodness. So 11 times four, that's 44 freight cars worth of items getting dumped in here. Probably 780 items per minute. Wait a second. How many items per minute can we get from this place? Considering all the throughput's gonna be perfect, 780 times 44. 
The capacity of this train station area is 34,320 items. Is that all of the items in the world though? Good question. Well, looking at things, we already know there's like 10,000 to 15,000 iron over here. There's a lot of stuff over in the green biome down here. And there's oil over in this lake. That might not be enough. We are going to be doing off-site processing. So like all of the iron over here, and there's a bit of quartz, will be turned into crystal oscillators. So that'll kind of cut down the amount of items. But it's kind of cutting it close. Like only 34,000 items worth of throughput? I don't know. Uh, but don't worry guys, there's already a plan. And you know what? I bet you guys can already tell what it is. Can you? Let me know if you figured it out in the comments below. But okay, I'm not gonna tease you guys, don't worry. What we're gonna do is we're gonna double up the train station. Because I've left the perfect amount of room to fit another one in here. Or at least I, I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. If this is off, I'm gonna be mad. Oh my gosh, it's not off. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So this means we can build this entire train station. Twice. So 35, or what was it? 34,320 items worth of throughput times two is like <laughs> 68,640 items of throughput. Or you know, we could just round it up to 69k because we're mature like that. <laughs> All right, so let's get the area actions mod and see what we can do. I'm pretty sure we can't actually copy the railways because they're kind of like belts and they follow the same mechanics. But so long as we can copy everything else, it's fine. Wait. Uh. Hold up. Train stations? Hello? Oh. Well, isn't that, um, a thing? I knew the- I, I kind of realized that the rails wouldn't copy and paste, but they didn't copy and paste in the stations either. So that means they're just broken. That's hyper oof. Yeah, even if we tried to put in the rails ourselves, it wouldn't work. Yikes. Okay. Hmm. Well, I don't see another way around this. Uh, we're gonna have to cancel this, actually. And I guess we'll copy and paste the platform, and that's it. Ah, then we'll have to rebuild the entire station ourselves. Okay, you know, we're getting the platforms at least, right? Let's try this one more time here. Huh, hyper weird. I can't not copy the stations aside from one over here. Okay, that's fine. I'll just delete all of them and rebuild. But I think we're good now, right? Yes? Let's press OK. 2,000 buildings built. And let's really quickly see how... Does this work? Like we can't build, oh we can build a railway in here. I wonder. Let's just quickly double check if the trains can see the station if we go through this. And if we add a train in, train do you see a station 17? Almost certainly not, right? No. Doesn't see the station. Kinda figured. Okay. Well, I'll delete all this and we will rebuild our super station again. And now our Double Decker Super Train Station is complete! Oh my goodness, it is glorious, it is beautiful, and it is perfect in every way! The designs, symmetrical, immaculate, and my favorite thing is that our main storage room is right here, and guess what? We can have a little balcony overlooking our train stations, so we can see them all the time! And make sure things are kind of working too. But speaking of, getting this working is gonna be a little difficult. Uh, I just realized after finishing everything that the belt work underneath, like for the first layer trains, is gonna be tight. So there's no headroom, like above the stations and the next platform. So we can't just build belts over the stations. And then all of the outputs are right here. So we have 11 different outputs and this amount of space to move things out. But then, oh my goodness, as I'm just looking at this, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, well, this is gonna be so difficult. But, guys, hello? Underneath, we can just build a warehouse underneath, we can bring everything to the right, 
and then we can have all of our stuff go up like a series of spine systems up over here and then it's set oh it's like why was I worried why am I ever worried everything's perfect oh my gosh and look at how it looks from here I love it how does it look from like way up above eh, it kind of looks like more gray poop but hey now it bridges the gap between like this area of the base and the other side of the base well, aside from having that tiny, tiny little bridge. But now I really want to see this thing running. Like, I gotta see our first Mega Train moving and grooving here. I have to. It is so necessary. So that is what we will do. So, I was actually busy on a Twitch stream, and I actually did a little bit of train work already. That's why we already had them unlocked when we started the video here. Uh, I actually just recently became a Twitch partner. Big clap. So thank you everybody who has supported me in the Twitch streams. And kind of to celebrate, I did a super stream. And we worked on some of the first train stuff. And I built the train system for our oil city over here. So it's big, it's spicy, and it is looking good. So it's a very similar system to the design we just built. There's a main loop for the trains, and then they kind of break off into one main unloading station. From here, all the oil, or sorry, no, it will be all the rubber will be transferred onto another train, and this train will go back to base. We have like chains of trains. It's kind of like one main loop for the world, a second loop for here, and a third loop just to gather the oil. Because over here, I didn't want to do a belt highway. It's kind of like being done before and trains. Like, say, do I say more? Exactly. And our system is going to work extremely well. So I've made one example here, where for the actual rubber collecting train, it will scoot down here, it will rear off the main track onto a sub loop, and to a substation. This substation will gather all of the oil from this uh, oil tower, and the other right over here. And then with the oil, or Gosh, the rubber, we're processing it. Goodness gracious, but with the rubber, we take that back, we rejoin the main loop, and everything gets dropped off at the station, and then, like I said, transferred to the main line there. Now, I had built this before our main station, so this might not be proper. How many free platforms do we have? We have one, two, nine, 10, 11. <laughs> oh. I almost had the right idea. <laughs> uh, we have to add in like three more of the uh, empty platforms for the extra locomotives though. Okay, so this station is all fixed now. Looking good, looking groovy. I got some power connected as well. So the example oil train is moving and grooving too. So that's gonna go join the main loop, go back over there. Uh, none of the belts are hooked up yet. I will be doing that later. <laughs> or soon, dot TM. But right now, I just want to see this system working. So, this train, hello my friend, at Twitch Station LLP. The area around here all has Twitch names because we made Twitch Partner. So, there we go. And then we have one trillion stations to choose from as well. Why are there so many? I don't know. How about we just go here? Sure. No timetable. Oh, there's a timetable. Hello? Oh, wait. It's moving. It's grooving. We may have our first automated train here. Or I guess second. After the example rubber train over there. Alright. But it's gonna park here. And then head back to base. Also, I've done a ton of work making sure all the tracks are connected. So all that system should work too. Almost. Right now, super train moving back to base. Through the stink and the farts, up to our first major train junction. And luckily, I have a lot of experience in a game called City Skylines, so I am very good at making these kinds of spicy junctions. And our inbound line goes underneath the main line, while our, no, our outbound line goes underneath the main line and the inbound line is up here. So everything merges together properly. Back on the main line, very cool. Then I made a junction over here, 
in case the train needs to go either to the top stations or the bottom stations. And it looks like we are going to the bottom stations. Okay, and then over here. Gotcha, first or second station, sir. I didn't really name any of these stations, so you guys are gonna have to give me a ton of suggestions. Please and thank you. But this train specifically will be stopping at Partner Station. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, I'm flying. Oh, I was like, I thought I was run over. No, we're flying though. But this will be Partner Station. Again, continuing the Twitch theme. And that's that! Easy peasy lemon squeezy. However, it can't get back yet. But that's why I have these two tracks right in the middle of everything. Because back here, we're going to have a little loop-de-loop. -loop. We're gonna have a little turnaround station. Or actually, do we even have to? This is insane, but would that work? Okay, well we can build it. But if we build it, will they come? Is the train seeing that now as a proper path? I'm able to reach next stop, of course, I understand. So, final meme then. And that is just destroying and rebuilding the trains. And then we reset things. If all else fails, this should work, if anything. So there. There. Autopilot. No timetable, but it is the timetable. Unable to reach next stop. What a shame! Okay. And then I guess for now then, we're just gonna make a straight up loop. There we go, just something like that, so the train can turn around and go to where it needs to be. Obviously, uh, we're gonna have to switch this up later on. But for now, I just wanted to see the train running. Moving and grooving. Get some value out of all of our efforts today. And see one of our glorious trains running through our base. After a long last, oh gosh. This has been my most anticipated moment of the entire Let's Play. Just watching our first trains move and groove. It is just something else. It's such a special moment. I love logistics, man. I love them. And trains are just my favorite thing. Oh, and look at the beautiful railways we have built here. Mm -mm -mm. It is just so well done. But now we're gonna have to add in a loop somewhere as well. So we'll what? So we'll have to change up the junction a bit. That was odd. Yeah, just a little bit and hope that there are no weird bugs like that in the future. Or I guess if there are, it's okay, but hopefully that doesn't break anything in the future. And we know on the way back this works good. And then just to enter the station, just goes over to the right there. And it stops. Beautiful! So everything is good for now, but this train station still needs an insane amount more work. So we will mess with it again next time. But for now, that's gonna be all for today. So if you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a like. And I hope to see you in the next video. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>